So now we'll take a look at what happens when this positive charge enters the magnetic field and it undergoes circular motion. So as we discussed before, this positive charge when it enters the magnetic field will basically undergo a circle. The circle will go sort of anti-clockwise and I'll do something like this, uh, approximate thing. And throughout, it's going to experience forces that are perpendicular to it, giving you this sort of result. Right. So why does it go undergo circular motion? Well, we discussed earlier that it experiences a force from the magnetic field, which we calculate as QVB, theta being 90 degrees in this instance. And we understand from our circular motion that what you need is a centripetal force, which is mv squared over r. So this is the force applied by the magnetic field. And importantly, it's always perpendicular to the velocity. This is the force required. to undergo circular motion. And we also understand, of course, that this is importantly always going to be the case that you need this to be perpendicular. So it kind of gets the right direction. It's always perpendicular and it maintains it that way. And so for that reason, we're then able to basically say, okay, given this, we can then say, we'll just let them equal. We'll let the magnetic force equal the centripetal force, which then means QVB, the charge of the particle, times the velocity of the particle, times the magnetic field strength, B, must equal mv squared over r. You can see that the V cancels on both sides. One V cancels on both sides, I should say. And then we can solve for R. So over here, we have an expression that we've derived for the radius of the circle. So for a charged particle entering a magnetic field, it will, due to the force of that magnetic force on the charged particle, undergo a circle. And we can actually work out the radius of this circle. The radius of this circle will equal the mass times the velocity, or the momentum, if you like, divided by the charge times the magnetic field strength. It's going to equal mv over qb. So m is the mass of the particle in kilograms. V is the velocity of the particle in meters per second. Q is the charge of the particle in coulombs. And B is the magnetic field strength of course, you know, SI unit of Tesla. So you can see that the main factors that affect the radius of the circle that, that's going in is the mass, the velocity, the charge of the particle, as well as the magnetic field strength. And because R equals mv over qb, then it's probably quite obvious that as the magnetic field strength goes up, then the radius will go down. So basically, you're, you're, as the magnetic field strength goes up, the magnetic field gives you a stronger force, and so you can make a smaller circle. As velocity goes up, kind of like your car going faster, nothing else changes. If your velocity goes up, then your radius will go up as well, because you can't turn as fast, right? Kind of think about like your car, right? The magnetic field strength is kind of like your friction force, like it's giving you the force. So if you've got better tires, you can turn faster. If you're going faster, then you can't turn as quickly. Or else equal, as your mass goes up, your radius goes up. So if your car is heavier, then you can't really turn much faster. And as Q goes up, 
again, the, the reason why Q goes up makes any difference is because it affects the force. So basically, your, in other words, your force goes up, which results in your R going down. So those are the sort of key criteria. And let's now take a look at an example where we might apply this to typical things we might see. So I'm still going to have my magnetic field. And into this magnetic field, I will be shooting two things. We will have an approach at different times, right? We will have both a proton, which we will designate in red, proton, as well as an electron. So they'll be fighting at different times. The proton will go through this magnetic field and draw out a path, and the electron will go out through this magnetic field and draw out a path. So protons and electron are both fired into this magnetic field at the same velocity. And consider, draw the trajectories. Well, this question is not very difficult, but it does need you to think about it a little bit, because, and it is very common for mistakes to be made here. So we've been working with positive charges mostly. So let's do the proton first. So the proton is heading in at some velocity. Again, we don't have the numbers, so we can't really work anything out exactly, but there's some magnetic field, there's some charged particle moving at some speed v, which is the same for both the proton and the electron. So the proton will experience a force when it enters the magnetic field. Use your right hand palm rule to confirm, but that force will be upward. And since the force is upward, that means the proton will be going in a circle in a sort of anti-clockwise direction. We have no idea how big or small this radius is. So I'm just going to draw some sort of circular arc. So this is just some circular arc of a very big circle. Okay. Let's say the velocity is very quick or something like that. I'm just drawing a big circular arc in that case. So as long as we do a acceptable circular arc with your compass extended very, um, very long, that's the point we're just making across. It's going to go upward and do that. Now, let's now consider the electron, which is something we haven't done before, so we might want to talk about that a little bit. So the electron is also a charged particle. It is also moving, and it is also entering a magnetic field, so it will, of course, experience the force equaling QVB. Now, remember, Q, the charge of an electron is the same as the proton. The velocity we're saying is the same. B, it was the same magnetic field, so that's also the same. So the force on the electron is exactly the same as the force on the proton in magnitude. But of course, there is the fact that it's a negative charge and not a positive charge. And if you've learned anything about positive and negative charges, you know that they behave in opposite ways, basically. So there's many ways you could deal with this. But when we talked about this many, um, the first time around, then basically we had mentioned that for a negative charge to get the direction, you basically just reverse your answer to a positive charge. So it's up to you how you want to do your reversal. But in this case, if we know the positive charge is going up with the force, then that means the force on the electron is going to go down, which means the electron will go downward in a circular fashion. It's still a charged particle in a magnetic field, so it's still going to be a circle. So since we know it's going to curve downward in a circular fashion, then I guess many students will then draw something that looks like this and be very happy with that. So we've got a circle arc going downwards. Seems good. Right? Wrong. That 
unfortunately, is not the right answer. And you might want to think about why that might not be the right answer and pay close attention to things that we've been talking about. So if you imagine that this proton is the correct answer, it's a very common thought to think that the electron is basically just a mirror image of the proton and it's going to go down with the same idea. But that is not the right answer. This is incorrect. And let's think what we've said, right? We've said the force is still equal to QVB, and so the forces are equal. But there is something that is different about the electron from tetra proton apart from one being positive and one being negative. And if you think about this more holistically, think of what the force does to the particle. The force makes the particle accelerate. It's all about the acceleration, ultimately. And how do you calculate the acceleration? Well, the acceleration is the force divided by the mass. And hold on a minute. Is the mass of a proton the same as the mass of an electron? And if you think about that, you should realize that the mass of a proton is much, much bigger than the mass of an electron. We've talked many times about these particles. We've talked about their properties. And particularly in chemistry, we talk also about their masses and so forth as well. So we know, or you should know, that the mass of a proton is significantly heavier than our electron. They don't compare. The, the proton is approximately 2,000 times heavier than an electron. You can look up the numbers for a more precise number, but it's in the thousands, like 1,800 and something. So it's something like that. So think of it like if you, you're the electron, then it trains the proton kind of sort of difference. So therefore, for that reason, the acceleration, while they get the same force, the acceleration is going to be very different. The mass of the proton is much higher. And so for the same force, the acceleration of the proton will be much smaller than the acceleration of the electron. And if the acceleration is much smaller, that basically means the electron will turn much faster. And we can think of that in this idea as well. V is the same, B is the same, Q is the same, because they're the same charge, but the mass of the electron is much smaller, so the radius is much smaller. So it indeed is a circular arc, and it indeed curves clockwise downward, but for an electron, it might more be more appropriate to draw something like this. It's a much smaller arc, and it is circular, in the opposite direction, whereas the proton goes in the other direction in a much, much, much bigger arc in a way that it doesn't look like it's even a completed quadrant while this has already completed a semicircle. So those are the factors that affect the radius and pay its close attention to protons and electrons. Those are very important and comes up and is examined very, very frequently in all many different points. And those are the main considerations you need to think about.